going on guys? Today I am doing something a little bit different. I am doing some basin trolling for walleyes. The conditions are pretty sweet. We finally have some south wind, which we have desperately, desperately needed. The water's starting to get just a little bit of color to it, which I think is gonna be a good thing. And this can be an awesome way to catch a whole variety of different species this time of year. There's a lot of fish, especially walleyes and muskies that push out into the main lake basin. So I'm gonna be targeting anywhere from 25 to like 30, 35 feet of water. And we're gonna be using crawler harnesses. We're gonna be running some bait suspended. We're gonna have some about, you know, seven feet down. We'll have some about 15 feet down. And I'm also gonna be running a bottom bouncer. And the coolest part of this, even though I'm out here looking for walleyes today, is that we could end up catching just about anything. We catch muskies, we catch pike, we catch perch, we catch crappies. You catch all kinds of stuff doing this. And it's really cool to see that these fish are just out in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the lake. So I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna show you guys the rigs that I'm running to catch these fish and hopefully we catch something. Alrighty, so the name of the game again is crawler harnesses. And I'm gonna be running, since I'm by myself, I can only run three lines, so I'm gonna be staggering my lines. I'm gonna have one high, one about halfway to two thirds of the way down, and then I'm gonna have one on the bottom so we can try and figure out what depth these fish are at. As far as colors go, that's kind of the million dollar question. What color do you run? When in doubt, especially in clear water, it's always a safe bet to go with something that looks natural. So I'm gonna be running mostly gold today. So some gold with a little purple in it, maybe something perchy. This one happens to be kind of a gold perchy purple thing. I love this blade. And we're gonna go ahead and throw a night crawler on here. And one of the biggest mistakes I see people make when they're fishing with crawler harnesses is they don't hook the crawler on properly. They hook it way too far down on this front hook. So the front hook, you want to just barely pierce the nose of the night crawler. The second hook, if you're assuming you're running a two hook rig, goes through the collar like that. And that's it. That's all you need to do as far as hooking your crawler on. But you wanna make sure that you're just barely hooking the nose of that night crawler. Otherwise you're gonna get excessive spin in the water. You're gonna twist your line up. The bait's not gonna run right. It's gonna look kind of stupid. And as far as gear goes, eight and a half foot medium trolling rods, 10 pound mono. And another really good question that a lot of people ask me is how far do you run your baits back to get them to a certain depth? There's a lot of different ways to figure that out. I go with the most simple way, which is using an ounce of lead and twice as much line as the depth that you want your bait to go. And that's based at one mile an hour. And that's basically where we're trolling. We're going about 0.9 to 1.2 ish miles an hour so what i'm going to do i'm going to have this one up high i'm going to put this one down about seven feet or so so i'm actually going to zero out my line counter we're going to let out about 10 feet of line here eight nine ten and now i'm going to add a one ounce snap weight these are made by kfin these things are super cool i'm going to snap that on bam just like that and now let's say, okay, I want my bait to get down seven feet. If we're using twice as much line as the depth we wanna get, we're gonna let out 14 feet of line. So I'm gonna go ahead and zero my line counter again. We're gonna let out 14 feet, 12, 13, 14. Well, we'll go 15, why not? And there we go. Now that bait's gonna run about seven feet down and we're gonna use our tried and true offshore tackle OR12 planer board snap it on we are using tattle flags today so that way we can see if we have bites or if we pick up debris on our lines and when you rig up a board with a tattle flag make sure you put some slack in between the two clips so that way the flag can go down usually i don't worry about my flags working my tattle flags when i'm pulling crankbaits but when i'm fishing crawler harnesses i want to know if there's any debris on it because it doesn't take much to knock one of these out of sync and totally ruin your presentation so we're gonna let that out put the clicker on feed that one out and running the clicker you're gonna let it out nice and slow that bait's not gonna sink all the way down hit the bottom especially if you're trying to fish close to bottom so make sure you're running a clicker i'm gonna get our next board out and then i'll show you guys my bottom bouncer rig Alrighty, so for my bottom bouncer rig, I'm gonna be rolling a purple and gold harness this thing's super dope my buddy alec hints makes these Thanks, dude. We're gonna give this thing a roll today. But I'm running that on a one and a half ounce bottom bouncer. Again, same rod, eight and a half, medium, 10 pound mono. Looked like my snap was a little goofy there. Nope, we're good. So we're gonna go ahead and drop this down right next to the boat. And as far as how much line to let out goes, 
Uh, the line counter is not really going to help you here. We're going to drop it down until it hits bottom, and then we're going to start the bait up. We're going to get it moving. So feed it out, feed it out, feed it out. Should be getting close. There's the bottom. So I'm going to give it, I don't know, maybe 10 more feet of line or so and go ahead and gauge the reel. Now, one thing that I do with my bottom bouncer rigs is I actually set the drag fairly light and I put the clicker on. And the reason for that is we don't have the shock absorption and kind of the, the time, if you will, that you have when you're running a planer board. So when you hook a fish on a planer board, you have kind of this big angle of line going on where when that fish actually eats it and starts pulling, pulling, especially if it's a big fish, it has a little bit of slack to kind of play with and you have a little bit of time to get to the rod and make adjustments if it's a really big fish, lighten the drag up and whatnot. With a bottom bouncer, a lot of times, especially if you hook something really big, if you get like a pike or a muskie, they will just take off rip in line. So you wanna make sure that you have your drag set light enough that if you do hook a big fish, they can run with it and they're not gonna snap you off, but still tight enough that if you do get a fish, it's gonna put hooks in it. And I do have the clicker on here, so I also have an, uh, an audible way of knowing that there is a fish if I'm not watching the rod. So that's about, it as far as my bottom bouncer goes. And I do watch my rod tip too. If I see that it's really hitting bottom quite a bit, I'm either gonna speed the boat up a little bit because we're going maybe a little too slow, or I'm gonna bring it in a little bit so that way it's not making quite so much contact with the bottom. But if it's hitting bottom every, I don't know, three to five seconds or so like this one is, that's just about perfect. Your bait should be up off the bottom far enough. It's not gonna get fouled up. And I usually check these about every 10 to 15 minutes just to make sure I'm not picking up any debris. So. We're all set, I got my three lines out, I got my high board, one about halfway down, one down by the bottom, so we're kind of covering the whole spectrum of the water column. We'll see what happens, hopefully we get some fish popping. Holy crap. That is a muskie on a freaking bottom bouncer. Oh no. That is a muskie on my crawler harness. Oh no. <laughs> I don't think I have a big enough net. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh my gosh. Not a big one, but look at how it's fighting. That is so sick. All right, come here, girl. Let's see what we can do here. Give her a little bit more drag. Okay. Musky on the crawler harness. Out here in 24 feet of water. That thing completely impaled it, so we're gonna fight this really carefully. So we don't get bit off because I don't want all the hooks in it. Granted, they are little hooks. I don't think it's going to hurt the fish, but I still don't want to leave hooks in it. Should probably be pulling crawler harnesses. I got a muskie. <laughs> yeah, I'm in 24 feet. Hit a bottom bouncer. With a harness. What's that? I think I'll be able to get it. It's not real big, but we'll see. Okay. I think I'll be all right. It's probably like, I don't know, 35, 36. Not real big. Yeah, they're they're weird this time of year, man. I actually got really lucky yesterday. You're not far off from where you should be. I got a 48 and a quarter over by that sink. Yeah, fourth cast, it was just laying there and it came out and ate it. <laughs> All right. So normally I would have this fish in the water, in the big net while I'm working on it. I'd also be wearing a glove, but heat of the moment, that didn't happen. So 
definitely not the species we are after, but I just measured it, about a 35 incher, just a little guy, but chunky. Pretty cool out here in 25 feet of water on a crawler harness, so kind of neat. Not the fish I expected to catch out here, but hey, I'll take muskies any way I can get them. So I'm gonna let this thing go. Maybe we'll catch a walleye, I don't know. All right, sweet release. You probably heard it. That thing was really angry, but I caught that on a crawler harness. And uh, my buddy Alec, Alec Hintz, up near Green Bay, actually makes some really sweet crawler harnesses. So Alec, that was on one of your harnesses. Thanks, dude, that was cool. Oh, wow, yeah, we almost did not catch that fish. All right, so digging this harness out of the net here, we almost did not catch that fish. That is the back hook. That is the front hook, and when I was unhooking that fish, I couldn't find the back hook, but it was pinned on that front hook, so that's kind of wild. We almost, really almost did not catch that fish. Bit it off right there, so uh, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, it got chomped here too, so we're gonna have to make a little, little fix to that leader, but how cool is that? One and a half ounce bottom bounce or 25 feet of water going a mile an hour and caught a muskie so that's kind of cool definitely not what i came out here to catch but hey that's okay i like muskies too all right so i've already got my snell retied i've got my new leader so this is how i kind of real quickly on the fly rebuild my harness so i've got the harness sitting here on the old leader i have the end that the hooks used to be on so i've got the other end of my new leader i'm just going to tie an overhand knot real quick bam like that get it nice and tight I don't want this knot coming undone otherwise our harness is gonna blow up everywhere so I'm actually gonna leave a little bit of tag end on there so that doesn't happen we got a little forgiveness and then you can usually just slide all your beads from your harness right over that knot right onto your new freshly tied leader sometimes the clevis Nope, that one went perfect. There we go. So now let's slide it right down. And we have a totally rebuilt harness, fresh leader, ready to go. Saves you a lot of time rather than sliding individual beads onto your leader and trying to rebuild it that way. This is going to save a lot of time if you need to rebuild a harness in a hurry on the fly. Well, as you can kind of see, the wind's picking up. Conditions are not great. There's a lot of floating stuff in the water. The fish did not really want to cooperate today, but we did get a muskie on a crawler harness, which was super cool, which is why you're seeing this video. Otherwise, I probably would have scrapped this video. It just wasn't really coming together the way I wanted it to. I only had a chance to fish for about an hour and a half today. I'm getting off the water. Things are getting kind of gross and crazy out here. Lots of boat traffic, floating stuff in the water. So I'm getting off the water. I'm gonna go do some more productive stuff and I will see you guys on the next video. Thank you